These two entry level cars are cousins of each other. They are based on the same CMFA platform and they share almost every mechanical. So which one should you buy, the Renault Quid or the Datsun Redigo? Well, time to find out. But before we do that, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the Motor Beam channel. Now, as I mentioned before, both these cars are based on the same CMFA platform and in terms of size, there is not a lot of difference but the Renault Quid is 296mm longer and 5mm wider than the Redigo. Meanwhile, the Redigo is approximately 56mm taller than the Quid. Both the cars have decent ground clearance and both have the exact same tyre size as well which is 165 70 14 None of these cars come with alloy wheels, both of them have steel rims but the Redigo comes with regular wheel caps. Meanwhile, the Renault Quid gets stylized wheels which basically look like alloy wheels. Now talking about the boot size, on the Datsun Redigo you get a cargo capacity of 222 litres. Meanwhile, on the Renault Quid you get a capacity of 279 litres which is significantly more than the Datsun Redigo. Now the thing over here is that on the Renault Quid there is a lot of exposed metal on the sides of the boot. So if you keep your bags or your belongings, the the metal is prone to a lot of scratches. Meanwhile, on the Datsun Redigo, you get this nice covering on the sides. So now I'm sitting in the cabin of the Datsun Redigo and as you can see, this is a very cozy place. So the driver's seat does not slide backwards more than this. So this is the maximum it can slide back, which means I'm sitting very close to the steering wheel and somehow I'm not able to find a lot of comfort in this driving position also. The footwell is not very spacious, it is a bit tight and the angle at which you keep your foot or the accelerator, that is also somehow a bit less ergonomic. So I drove this car for two hours before coming for the shoot and my leg actually started paining. So yeah, a slightly more spacious front end would have been better. Now in terms of quality and aesthetics inside the cabin, the dashboard looks better than the pre facelift Redigo. This is an all new dashboard but the quality is just about average fit and finish levels are decent not that great actually there are a lot of rough edges a lot of inconsistencies throughout the cabin and some plastic parts feel very flimsy as well now the redigo doesn't have a lot of features you get an 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with apple carplay android auto you get a similar touchscreen on the quid but with a different software and apart from that you get a basic instrument cluster with a small digital mid and a manual ac only at the front you get a single usb port an aux port and a 12 volt charging socket and the lock unlock button is placed over here on the center console apart from this the mirrors cannot be electrically adjusted you have this stock over here to adjust the mirrors and again, the quality of this could have been better. Overall, as a budget car, the interior of the Redigo is decent. It is better than the pre facelift, definitely, but still, somehow it leaves a, something to be desired. Sitting in the rear seat of the Datsun Redigo, and as you can see, Niru is decent for a car this small. And the driver's seat has been set to my driving position. I'm six feet tall, but as I mentioned before, the seat cannot be slid backwards more than this. So, again, that is a constraint over here and the rear seat, the squab of the rear seat is quite long but it is also extremely flat so there's no, there's no, you don't get this comfort or your bolstering over here, it is extremely flat. Even the front seats are quite flat on the ready go but again the seats are big in size, at least the squab is big in size and you get two fixed headrests at the rear, even the front headrests are fixed. So no adjustable headrest in this car, no center armrest as well and no center headrest as well. So the rear seat experience is average on the Datsun Redigo, decent space, the seat comfort is not all that great, the seat even though it is big and the thing over here is that even the, on the top end variant you do not get rear power windows, you get this manually adjusting thing, something which I have seen after a really long time on any car. So yes, that's about it on the Datsun Redigo I guess, no rear AC vents, no charging ports at the rear, well that is expected in an entry level car and now it's time to move to the Quid. Sitting in the Renault Quid now and the experience does seem slightly better. Now in terms of space, well the footwell has more space than the one on the Redigo. My foot can easily move around over here and even the driving position is better than that on the Redigo because the seat can be slid back and forth a lot more than the Redigo. The range is longer on this and you get a better driving position. Along with that, the steering wheel feels great to hold. You get this leather wrap on the top the perforated leather wrap which is there on the top but the bottom and the side part is again not covered in leather 
and this 8 inch touch screen is similar to the one on the Redigo. The software is different but the volume control knob is also exactly the same. Now both the cars get power window switches on the center console. On the Quid you get these switches over here just below the touch screen. Whereas on the Redigo you get these switches a bit lower down on the center console. Just like the Redigo, even the Quid gets a single USB port, an aux input and a 12 volt charging socket at the front and you also get these bottle holders, a large bottle holder and two small storage spaces in the center console. The fit and finish levels on the Quid are also quite average. I mean, there are some edges which could have been better finished. The glow box feels a bit inconsistent on our car. It doesn't open up properly. Overall quality levels are similar on both the cars, but somehow the vibe in the Quid feels a bit better. Now on the Quid, you get this funky digital instrument cluster and you also, because this is the climber variant, you get these orange accents on the center console, on the floor mats, on the door pads and even on the seat upholstery, which adds that cool quotient to this entry level car. Now in terms of features, you get this manual AC, but if you want to adjust the ORVMs on the Quid, you cannot do it internally. There is no stock present over here and you have to open the window and adjust the mirror by putting out your hand. So that is slightly inconvenient. In terms of safety features, well, the lower trims of both the cars come with a single driver side airbag only, whereas the higher trims come with dual front airbags and ABS is offered as standard on all the variants of both the cars. But sadly, the global end cap ratings of both these cars are nothing to write home about. Sitting in the rear seat of the Renault Quid and it is a mixed experience over here. So as you can see, Niroom is just about decent, somewhat similar to the Redigo, but I think the Redigo had slightly better Niroom. And again, in the Quid, you sit a bit lower compared to the Redigo. Now the seat scope also seems to be shorter by a few millimeters compared to the one on the Redigo but overall the experience in the cabin is similar to that car as well. You get two fixed headrests at the rear, two fixed headrests at the front. The front seats on the Quid actually felt a bit better than the Redigo. Meanwhile the rear seats don't offer a lot of comfort or bolstering as such and again the rear seat of the Quid is also quite flat. Now the Renault Quid gets a center armrest. This is something which is missing on the Redigo and the Quid also gets power windows at the rear. Meanwhile, the quality of the materials used on the door pads, this door lock handle over here, the quality of these materials feels slightly better than the materials used on the Redigo. But again, there's not a world of a difference, just a wee bit better. So that's about it about the cabin experience of the Datsun Redigo and the Renault Quid. It is now time to do a bottle holder test wherein I'll put a 1 litre bottle in the bottle holders of these cars and see which one is more practical out of the two. So I have this 1 litre bottle of water. I'll try to put it in the bottle holders of the Datsun Redigo. Let's see how many places this one fits. Now talking about the front doors, well, there is no bottle holder as such over here. It is quite thin, whatever it is there. So even if I put my mobile phone, the space gets full. So forget the front doors. But if I talk about the rear doors, the bottle holder is quite wide. You can actually try and squeeze in two bottles over here. Okay, maybe not two 1 litre bottles, one, but one 1 litre bottle and maybe a another smaller water bottle. So yes, I think you can put in two bottles here easily. So let's make it two bottles here, two bottles in the other rear door of the Datsun Redigo. That makes it four bottles. And uh, if I talk about the center console, there is space enough for two large bottles. So that makes it a total of six 1 litre bottles in the Datsun Redigo. It is now time to check out the bottle holders on the Renault Quid. Now, as you can see, there's a one litre bottle already placed here. I can place another one easily and there's actually space for one more and another small bottle. So let's make it three one litre bottles in each of the front doors. That makes it six bottles. And if I talk about the rear door, well, there's no bottle holder in the rear door of the Renault Quid. So that is zero. And one bottle can be put in the center console. So that makes it a total of seven one litre bottles in the Renault Quid. So I'm driving the Renault Quid first and both these cars actually come with the same engine options. So the smaller engine is an 800cc 3 cylinder unit that makes around 54 horses and 72 newton meters of torque. Meanwhile, I'm driving the 1 litre Quid and I also have the 1 litre Redigo with me. The Quid is an AMT, the Redigo is a manual, the Quid is available with a manual also, Redigo is also available with an AMT. Now this 1 litre engine makes around 68 horses and 91 newton meters and in terms of drivability, it is just about decent. I mean, it is not all that punchy or all that powerful responsive, but it does its job decently well if you're driving in the city and maybe occasionally out on the highways. Low end response is just about fine. The engine takes its own time to pick up pace. So if you're looking to drive fast, aggressively, or make some fast overtaking maneuvers, then the engine might leave you 
wanting for more but apart from that for day to day driving it is just about fine now talking about the 5 speed amt on the quid well the amt is good for convenience but it is not as butter smooth as a proper automatic but of course no car in this segment comes with a proper automatic that is also there this amt on the quid gets a creep mode but you do not get a manual mode and there's no uh, regular conventional gear knob over here so you get this rotary gear selector with the usual neutral reverse and drive modes in terms of refinement also this one liter engine is just about okayish the engine is audible inside the car overall the nvh levels of both the cars the ready go and the quid aren't all that great so a lot of outside noise filters inside both the cars now i drove the ready go as well and the engine response is quite similar on both the cars the quid makes its peak power at 5500 rpm meanwhile the ready go makes its peak power at 5550 rpm just a small difference the ready go which i have is the manual and the clutch is extremely light on that car so that makes it quite easy to drive but the gear shifts are extremely notchy on the ready go and i think the same is the case with the quid manual as well overall both the cars are very easy to drive both have decent outdoor visibility in terms of fuel efficiency well this 1 liter engine is quite decent i mean in the city you'll get 14 to 15 easily and out on the highways you can get as much as 18 to 19 as well so that is not much of a concern over here both the cars are economical to drive they have decent drivability not too explosive not too punchy now if i talk about the 1 liter k series engine that comes on the maruti espresso well that engine even though it is similar in terms of power and torque on paper it is quite it is slightly better than the ready go in the quid because that engine feels a bit more punchier as well and refinement levels are also slightly better on that engine overall that engine feels a bit better to drive driving the datsun ready go facelift now this gets the same 1 liter engine as the reno quid 3 cylinder unit and this one the car which i'm driving right now has a 5 speed manual you also get an amt just like the quid but on this manual this engine does feel a lot responsive and punchier because on the amt some amount of lag can be felt now just like the reno quid the datsun ready go is also quite an easy to drive car the quid is small this one feels even smaller because of the cramped foot wall the compact dimensions of the car and the fact that i'm sitting so close to the steering wheel but driving such a small car in the city has its own set of benefits like you can park the car anywhere you can maneuver through tight lanes all that can be done very easily both the cars have very light controls the steering wheels on both the cars are light but some of the steering on the ready go feels lighter than the one on the quid sadly none of the steering's offer that great a feedback neither are the steering's very communicative and they feel quite lifeless both the cars come with a pliant suspension setup and the ride quality is decent on both the cars at bad roads yes some of the sharper potholes undulations are filtered inside the cabin they can be felt because the tires are quite skinny on both the cars at 165 70 14 and if we talk about the stability and the composure at high speeds well these cars feel stable up to maybe 100 km per hour after 120 after 100 actually you start feeling some sort of vertical and sideways movement on both the cars but somehow it is felt a bit more on the ready go than the quid the quid in comparison drives in a bit more matured manner now see honestly these cars aren't meant for being pushed around hard on the corners so if you go aggressive on the corners if you try to take some fast turns with these cars you will be disappointed because these cars are not meant to do all that the grip offered from the tires is just about adequate for normal driving and if you do push the car hard you will notice some amount of skidding or you know sliding on both the cars overall i'd say this 1 liter engine offers decent drivability the manual is more fun the amt is more convenient both the cars are easy to drive they are good enough for city driving and maybe occasional driving but somehow in terms of driving manners the reno quid feels slightly better than the datsun
So finally, Renault Quid or Datsun Redigo, which one should you buy? Well, compared to the pre-facelift Redigo, this one looks better, has some more features and it makes for a decent first-time purchase. But if you see the overall package, the Renault Quid feels a bit more accomplished and it also offers a bit more space and better, slightly better driving manners compared to the Datsun Redigo, which is why my pick out of these two would be the Renault Quid. Meanwhile, if you don't like any of these cars, then your only option as a competitor in this very same segment is this orange-colored super SUV. But if you can increase your budget slightly, it might make a lot of sense to go for the Lord Tiago which is not only bigger and more spacious but it also offers a 4 star safety rating. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it.